Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. I'm now joined by TV presenter and owner of Pure Results, Catherine Thomas. Good morning, Catherine, and welcome to Business Matters. Good morning, Carl. How are you? Very well, thanks. Catherine, we'll be discussing your business, Pure Results. But first, you were a household name that has spent almost 20 years on our TV screens. But looking back at your early years in boarding school in Dublin, was TV presenting always your chosen career? When you say 20 years on TV, that I, that always makes me shudder when it, I count back. I go, I can't believe it's been that long. So, you know, I always loved performing. Uh, for me, I wanted to be an actress. You know, I, I did lots of speech and drama in Carlo with a great t- teacher called Mary Doyle. So I very much loved the stage. I loved performing. So from that perspective, I suppose it wasn't a huge jump to get into TV. But TV was never, it was never the goal. It was acting. It was going to Hollywood. Uh, I ended up in Donnybrook. My sister's in Hollywood. <laughs> and, uh, and, I, and I'm still there. But yeah, like my dad and mom would have always encouraged me acting, loved that creative side of me, but very much like, you know, your typical Irish family, get the piece of paper behind you, get something that's, that might make you a bit of money or that you can fall back on if you don't end up, you know, turning into Angelina Jolie. <laughs> so, so yeah, they sort of looked at, at communications and DCU and arts and UCD, which I ended up doing. And when I was in arts, when I was doing my degree in UCD, I set about, I said, I can't really get into film now. How am I going to get my, my foot in the door? And I started writing to all the different t- television production companies around Dublin and I was taken in voluntarily to do tea, coffee, label videos, all that sort of stuff into Coco Television and that is where by accident my TV career started because they had been commissioned to do a show called Rapid which is a sports programme that I started off my very first TV gig was with Jason Sherlock and that was a great show, you know, it, it, it ran for three years. But I was labelling the videotapes of all these showreels that were coming in, of all these girls that were applying for the job. And then one of the producers just said, listen, would you have any interest in it yourself? And that's how it happened. And over the years, who have you admired as a TV presenter? God, who have I admired? Michael Parkinson, of course, is... Um, the one and only Michael Palin when I started on the travel show on No Frontiers Palin for me was just amazing his books the way he presented David Attenborough again just an icon and you know somebody who's so passionate about what what they do I I recently saw him on the Graham Norton show and I think Ben Affleck or or Bradley Cooper one of those lads was on the couch beside him and I just could not take my eyes off David Attenborough. He was just, he, he's, he's a hero. He's incredible. He's passionate. He's interested in everything that he does now. And I think um, if you can maintain an interest and a passion in what you do in your career, right to the stage of, you know, I think he's into his 90s now, late 80s into his 90s, and he still is inquisitive about everything. That to me is a sign of somebody who still loves what they do. And, and also, believe that you never know everything you know there's always something new to learn you can always learn from people in your career in your life and I very much get that from him and he just has a way with the camera you know that I I, I really admire and is that that same interest and passion that has kept your attention in TV for the past 20 years yeah I think it is I still love what I do I absolutely adore my broadcasting work Um, whether that has been traveling around the world and Understanding. I mean, when I when I started on No Frontiers, the travel show, I was 20 years of age with a bag on my back, disappearing into jungles for weeks on end, crossing the desert in Africa, uh, disappearing down to Australia, you know, only to contact my parents a month later. Um, and, and I loved it. But after about three or four years, I realized that my job, this was a career for me and I needed to really understand what I was doing. So... I made sure I knew everything, the workings behind the camera so I could shoot, I could do sound, I could direct, I could present. And over the years, I realized that it's a real craft to bring people from their sitting rooms through the camera to where you are, you know, and that was my job. And and I love doing that. Same with live TV. You know, live TV is a very different, it was a very different machine for me when I got into it. But it, it's an adrenaline rush. You know, you, it's you holding this whole show together. Anything could go wrong at any time. And that sort of, I think, plays into my personality as well. And But it definitely keeps the passion there. It definitely keeps the interest there. You know, working on Operation Transformation, you're working, I'm working on a show with people that I care about, that I'm really passionate about and that I'm interested in, you know, and, and I think that's a, a big part of it for me. When you see people do well, I, 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 don't, I don't think there's anything I enjoy more than seeing people push themselves outside their comfort zone. And when you see that, you know, you get to work on Operation Transformation where 
every week these people are doing that, standing there with very little on, like standing in their jocks on camera, you know, putting themselves out there, pushing themselves, pushing themselves every week. And, you know, it's a, it's a great honour and it's a great privilege to work on a show where you are a small part of helping people achieve their goals. And I think that, like, you know, I don't think television will ever get boring for me if I'm working on shows that I love and that I care about. You know, I mean, it's very easy to take any job that's offered, but I think maintaining yourself in the world of television, what's really important is that you pick the right jobs and you let the wrong jobs go. And that was advice I was given a long time ago. Now, 2015 signalled a significant change of direction for yourself when you established Pure Results. Was Operation Mm. Transformation a catalyst for this, Catherine? Maybe in a way it was, but for me, I I'd, I had missed the travel, you know, having done No Frontiers for so long. And I had been to so many retreats around the world. I'd been to yoga retreats in India and I'd been mountain climbing in Colorado and I'd been to boot camps in Mexico and Spain and all over the place. And I, I suppose my, my newfound love of fitness happened after I left college. I was, um, I was more fond of the bar in UCD than anything else. <laughs> and um, then, you know, having a job where you're on your feet, you're on the go the whole time and knowing what it feels like to be healthy and then seeing I suppose the changes that can happen on Operation Transformation I wanted to bring my two passions together which was travel, holidays and fitness and the fact that any time I wanted to go away and do something like this I mean I've been to so many yoga retreats and there's brilliant yoga retreats here in Ireland but establishing something like a fitness retreat where it's you know really about pushing people it's really about getting people to see where their limits are um, and that their bodies are capable of so much more than our bodies are capable of so much more than we give them credit for um, and I think some people can be afraid of exercise if you haven't started um, or if you've fallen off the wagon or if you've had three kids and you've done nothing for five years I think people can be afraid and I wanted to establish a, a, a place for people to come where you don't have to be afraid you can be there's no such thing as being the fattest or the unfittest or the slowest or the fittest you know this is like a a group of people coming together in a really supportive environment where nobody is judging anybody and you can work out beside somebody who is doing 55 sit-ups and if you're doing five sit-ups but you're both giving it 100 percent that's all that matters you know and i've been to these places around the world um a couple in thailand and the most recent one was in spain and we just didn't have it here and we live in a beautiful country uh, with amazing landscapes, amazing scenery to get out, go walking, go hiking uh, in between classes. And um, so that's why it just came to me one night sitting at the kitchen table with a glass of wine or probably three. And uh, that's hmm. how it all started. So how does a Pure Results boot camp work? Uh, we run seven day or three day all inclusive retreat. So uh, depending on the individual, whatever they want to achieve, whether it's weight loss, whether it's toning up for an event, uh, whether it's increasing fitness or whether it's just getting away for a bit of a break, a bit of me time. Most of our clients that come down are women uh, and most of them are looking for you know, a weight loss result. So they would get a one-on-one consultation with our nutritionist um, who establishes you know, what their goals are and then um, a meal plan is devised for them on an individual basis, but everybody works out together. So on site, when you come down, I have, I'm always on site myself for at least two days of every camp that we do. I have two chefs, a nutritionist, four personal trainers, a yoga teacher, a mindfulness coach. So it's like the whole um, package. It's not just, there's nobody that is shouting Sergeant Major like at you. Um, as I said, I want people who, who get people. So it's a very inclusive environment. And yeah, it's basically you leave your brain at the door is what I say. It's a bit like, mm. it's a bit like uh, summer camp for adults because people come down, they're generally very nervous. A lot of people come on their own, but they don't know what to expect. And, um, and within a day, everyone is having the crack. You know, it's 20, 25 people um, working out together. You don't, you're sleeping really well every night. You're eating your five meals a day. Uh, you're training um, hard. It's an intense week, but I, everybody just works out to their own level. And we very quickly have, we've got trainers on site that figure out, you know, if you're working 100%, great. If, if you've got another 5% in there. So we do a mixture of all sorts of classes. We do high intensity classes like boxing, circuits, uh, metafit, all of that, but we we intersperse that with um, classes, very low and in, low, uh, low intensity classes like yoga, breathing, stretching. Um, we do nutrition workshops, um, exercise workshops like running workshops, mindfulness. We have a lot of um, motivational speakers that come come down and um, you know and, and give our clients 
that extra bit of boost and that extra bit of self-confidence as well. And how do you tailor the programme for the varying needs and, of course, abilities of participants? So we do one-on-one consultations with our nutritionist to establish goals. Some people want to put on weight. Um, most of our clients, 90%, want to lose a few pounds. Um, some are training for marathons. Um, some have not done anything for four or five years. So again, the, the food plan is worked out on an individual basis based on BMIs and, and target goals. But the exercise plans... Um, you know, I think very much like we're, we're quite, I, you know, it's a very Irish thing that we're afraid to get started. We're afraid to go to the gym because it, I think, you know, the way sometimes you have to clean the house before the cleaner gets here. <laughs> and I, I, I sort of think people are like that with going to the gym or exercise now. Like I'm too embarrassed. I lose four or five pounds before I go to the gym or before I contact a personal trainer or before I go to a Zumba class or before I do anything, or I don't want to go out walking or running because people will be looking at me. Uh, and I think we, we, we often use that too much as an, ex, as an excuse. So I want to encourage everybody, all fitness levels, to come down and understand that you can train together. So if you've never done anything before, that does not stop you uh, working out in a kettlebell, a kettlebell class with somebody who does it all the time because this is about your individual. When you're standing there, you're working out for yourself, you're working out with yourself. Yes, you're with other people, but you take things at your own pace and once you're giving 100%, uh, if the person beside you is giving 100% but they're doing 100 times more reps, that doesn't matter because they're giving their 100% as well. So it's about pushing to your own limit and that's what it, you know, I suppose that's what it comes down to all the time. Everybody has different comfort zones. It depends how long you've been sitting in them. And um, that's why and people who have never trained before get great um, satisfaction and great support working out with people who train all the time. And people who train all the time have nothing but the utmost respect and admiration for people who are starting on that journey because they were once there too. So as a group of people, when you have a group of people like that that come together, it's a powerful um, connection and it's a powerful support system over seven days and it really is incredible the difference that seven days can do um, to your confidence to your self-belief um, and to your your it's, it's self-belief knowing what you can do going forward that you were afraid to do seven days beforehand you know it's about taking that fear away and Catherine you said that the majority of your clients are women what age profile of clients are you attracting to pure results our average age is 36 um, but we've had everybody from 16 to 71 down with us. So um, we had a 16-year-old girl who came down with her mom and they had the most amazing week. We get a lot, a lot of moms and daughters and we also had a 71-year-old who came down on her own and had the time of her life. She was fitter than all of us. <laughs> <laughs> now you mentioned that you attend every boot camp yourself for at least two days but apart yeah. from the boot camps themselves how involved are you in the day-to-day operations of the business? Yeah, well, that's my um, uh, that's where the, the the business end of this. I'm still trying to figure out because um, a very intellectual, sensible, and wise business person once said, "You should spend more time on your business and not in it." I'm still trying to get there because uh, I do take a very hands-on approach. Um, I really feel that you know, I'm. It's it's a very new thing for me. This is only we're only three years old. Um, I want my clients to get 120 percent every camp that we do. Um, I want my team to deliver. I've got an attention to detail that I never knew I had. Um, I've got a sense of achieving um, excellence that I never knew I had. But when people are coming to you, when they're looking for you, looking to you for results, they're looking. Um, to you to uh, to support them and they're also investing you know they're spending money to be there they're spending a week of their holidays to be with you you know so every aspect of what we do has to be 120% for me and I don't take anything less than that so I've been quite um, it was, it's been quite difficult I suppose for me to step back that they are so good at what they do they don't need me you know in on top of them as well so I've had to learn to step back a little bit and that's been hard for me but it's been very good for the business still kind of learning what sort of boss I am you know because I've always been a team player and um so it, it, they, they manage, they cope with me and they put me in my place. <laughs> <laughs> now, Catherine, how beneficial has your own public profile been in building this business? Yeah, I would say it's absolutely been a huge benefit for my business. But at the same time, I, I suppose I, when I started this business sitting around my kitchen table, I said, if I can't sell this business, nobody can with, with the profile that I have. And so I went about setting up the business and choosing the locations and getting the team and, you know, got a few interviews in various newspapers. And then I said, right, I'll sit back now and the phone is going to ring. And it didn't ring on day one and it didn't ring on day two and it didn't ring on day three. And I said, 
right, this requires a hell of a lot more thought, a hell of a lot more work, a hell of a lot more drive and and planning, you know. Because um, I'm I'm somebody, I am probably am a bit of a risk taker and I jumped two feet in there and said, we'll figure it out as we go. And, and business didn't happen in the beginning in the way that I thought it would, you know. It's, it's people have to invest, people have to trust, people have to understand what they're buying into. And it was a new concept really for Ireland. And it's a niche market as well, you know. Um, people's holidays are precious, all of that. So um, it's taken us a long time, a lot of work, uh, working with a lot of the right people to get the message out there and understanding that in year one, business was slow for us because it's word of mouth. And, um, you know, we were running with camp half full and, you know, with three and four people sometimes on, on a week. And, you know, it, that's taken a lot of work and it's taken a lot of worry and taken a lot of sitting down with my accountant going, I know this can work. <laughs> so um, it's just about driving on and, and um, keeping believing in what you do. And that's always what it's about. If I didn't believe in this and if I didn't believe in the results and if I didn't believe in the programme, I would have packed it in, you know. But um, we, we're three years in business now. I have an amazing team of people working for me. Uh, we're expanding into the corporate market, which is a market that I um, d- had never really considered setting this business up. Um, but again, wellness in the workplace is a huge, uh, people are placing a huge, and companies are placing a huge emphasis on it, and rightly so. Um, so that's, you know, a new part of the business model for us that's working really well. So the next chapter for Pure Results is into the corporate market. But what's the big vision for Pure Results over the next five years? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely growing into the corporate market, but also to um, reach more people, you know, tell more people that you can do this. Uh, an investment in yourself is um, so rewarding. And I think all our clients, you know, when we, the testimonials that we get, uh, we give everybody an evaluation form at the end of the week. And it really is, for me, what, what I want Pure Results, the message from Pure Results to be over the next five years is that people understand and realise you've got to invest in yourself. I'm not very good at taking a step back and, you know, closing business, uh, you know, uh, taking time for myself, calming down, stopping, you know. I, we're all go, go, go. And I think a lot of women in Ireland particularly, you know, we're working hard, you, you get home, you pick up the kids, you're gone, your weekends are you're running here, you're running there. Very few of our 350-odd days a year are dedicated to ourselves. And I think when you invest in yourself, when you take time out for yourself, when you invigorate your health, um, it's incredible the uh, difference that it makes for the next sort of three, six, nine months going forward. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick.